Well, well, well. It's April the 4th, 2022, and the CPL retention and sign-in list has been released. And when I say retention and sign-ins, we mean the local sign-ins. We're gearing up towards another CPL. It may be a few months away, but we got some talking points. We've got some talking points. Each of the six franchises have picked their five, either retentions or sign-ins. And there's, there's a lot to say. Walk with me. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. When the news dropped this afternoon that TKR had signed Dre Russ and Nicholas Puran, you know when you get some news and you, you look at the screen and then you go, huh? And then you read the screen again and you're like, huh? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Who's really going to stop TKR in 2022? Listen, we got to chop this one up because you see when it comes to CPL, obviously IPL is on at this moment in time, but... CPL, for me, never gets the level of depth and analysis that, that it should get, given it's the number two T20 tournament in the world. Obviously, PSL people, you're, you're starting to screw, as I said that right now. But we got the biggest party in sports, so we got, this, we got the second best tagline in T20 franchise cricket. And um, we're here to bring you that analysis. We're here to bring you it. No one else is doing it, so we got to chop this up. Each of the uh, six franchises have released their five, their chosen five, whether retained or signed. And the news is too big. We can't just let this go. The news is too big to, 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 to leave alone. we got to delve into it. Santoki sent me a message and all it said was, shake my head. Puran's gone from Guyana. we got to talk on this. Obviously, Santoki's on holiday right now. So I had to pick the next best person to jump on the show to break this up. He's a Trini himself. You already know who it's going to be. So his smile must be big when he comes on this screen. Because Trimbago must be the favourites this year. But but let me bring on good friend of the podcast, Dino. Dino, how you doing? What's good, man? This is how we play, man. CPL time. <laughs> Let's go. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Dino, even before I even... Um, bring up all the visuals and we kind of chop this up properly. Uh, what was your instant straight off the cuff reaction when you saw the, the, the not the six squads, but the six uh, retention slash signed names or from the 16, sorry. Yeah. Who's going to be TKR, man? Who's going to do it? Is it, are we just going to hand them the title now? They seem very, very strong now. It really did surprise was Puran, right? Because Dre Russ, we always heard these murmurs happening throughout the Caribbean. You know, he always had the link with KKR. But Puran out of the blue, uh, gone from Guyana, is the big shocker that we really didn't expect. And there it is now. They've got seven superstar names there. 100 percent. And I think before Dino and I do this, so obviously we're going to go through each team. We're going to try and look at the strengths, the weaknesses, what it might suggest about who each side should, pro not who, but more so what skill set uh, each side might be trying to target when the actual main draft uh, comes around. But before we do that, I think it was worth, it's worth reading kind of like the press release as to how these names um, have ended up in the different squads. So, um, uh, CPL, uh, upon releasing the retained and signed list, we are. this is what we've been led to understand. So there were two pre-draft windows for the 2022 season. In the first window, each team could retain up to five Caribbean players with a maximum of two from the top five salary spots. Okay, I'll say that again. In the first window, each team could retain up to five Caribbean players with a maximum of two from the top five salary spots. 
In the second window, teams were then given an opportunity to sign two more local players. These could be new signings from those who are not retained by other teams or players who appeared for that team in the previous season. Okay. Now, that's quite, you have to kind of take a minute to just kind of chew that up in your head. So first things first, in those two pre-draft windows. So, for example, a team, if they wanted, like TKR, could have retained just five TKR players, not signed anybody from any other franchise, just gone for five straight TKR players. So, for example, TKR have not retained uh, Kari Pierre. They've not retained Ravi Rampal. So those are the examples of what I'm talking about. They've not retained Darren Bravo, who's actually gone somewhere else. But I'm giving you examples of what they could have done. Jamaica, for example, could have retained Carlos Brathwaite. They've chosen not to. So each team had five spots of players to retain. But two of them, only two, sorry, could come from the top two salary spots. Now, when I show you the list of the five players from each side, what I can't show you because it's not been made clear, is which players are from the top two salary spots. We can um, suggest who it might have been. So, for example, for TKR, you assume it's a Pollard and an Orion, for example. Um, Rampal, I think, was actually in one of the top salary spots last year, so that's possibly why he couldn't have been retained, if you, if you follow the drift of explanation here. So each team could retain five. Some have retained more than others. So, for example... Jamaica, I believe, I think only... Re no, in fact, Jamaica retained three. So a lot, most have retained three and added two. Some have retained four and only added one, for, it, for example. And then the second part of that explanation I just gave, in the second window, teams were given an opportunity, opportunity to sign two more local players. Okay, so if you retain three, you sign two. Two more local players. These could be new signings from those who were not retained by other teams or players who appeared for that team in the previous season. Now, <laughs> let's look at the first part of that sentence. Teams were allowed to sign two more local players. So basically you retain three, sign two. So looking at TKR as an example, they have signed Andre Russell. But for them to sign Andre Russell... <laughs> Jamaica have to have not retained Andre Russell. There it is. There it is. And if anyone's wondering, if anyone's wondering why I'm laughing, because again, even if you don't want to use the Dre Russell, because Dre Russell is a bit easier to understand, because as Dino said at the top, he's been agitating to get out of the Talawas for a long time now. This this has been at least two years in the running. I didn't even think Dre Russell would play for the Talawas last year because he made it clear that he didn't want to be there. But <laughs> TK, I've got Puran, which means Guyana have chosen not to retain Puran. Or, because that doesn't make any sense, or as Puran told Guyana, I don't want to play for you because how does it make... Why would Guyana voluntarily go, Nicholas Puran, <laughs> we don't want you. We're not going to retain you. Um, so there's a lot to unpick here. And we wouldn't be the Caribbean Cricket Podcast and Dino wouldn't be Dino if we didn't look at things properly. These are questions that need to be asked because it don't make no sense otherwise. What, should we, we can't just skirt over that issue. Um, so, Dino, <laughs> Dino, let me put up the, uh, the slides here. Let's move us to the side and look at the slides. And Dino, let's, let's, let's go to even before we get to the main draft, which probably will be in May. Even before we get to that, when we just base it off the um, local retentions, and sorry, I said I keep I kept saying five people. That's my fault. Some uh, some teams have only retained or signed five in totals. You'll see that TKR um, have got seven actually. So sorry, sorry, that's my fault, people. So you are allowed to retain five and then have two additional signings. My fault for getting that explanation wrong. So Dino, let's start with. Um, TKR. Uh, let's go with their seven. I'll read them out. So TKR have retained Kyron Pollard, Sunil Narine, who I have to assume are the two players who are the two that they've retained from the top two salary spots. I don't know who's in pot one. I don't know who's in pot two, but those two must be the top two. Then they've also retained Akil Hussain, J 
Jaden Seals, Tion Webster. And then in addition, they've signed Andre Russell from the Talawas and Nicholas Puran from uh, the Amazon Warriors, who we have to assume have not been retained by their franchises. First thoughts on TKR, Dina? Yeah. Um, look, I want to criticize those picks, but it's the best picks that you can get in this tournament. You know, uh, Sunil Narayan and Akil Hussain basically dominated that tournament with the ball last season, right? So that's a no-brainer that appeal is there. Jaden coming in. Um, is also we one you would want to protect and have in your franchise, right? The big name there would be how does Tion Webster get in there, right? Um, but you look at that team on paper, you got two openers, two spinners, three pacers, a wicket keeper. You got a whole team there, basically. You've got the whole team there, and whatever you fill around that, uh, you know, and I can tell you who the picks will be. It's going to be Carrie Pierre, Ravi Rampal, Lendell Simmons. Those are the guys that are going to try at the Colin Monroe. That's who's coming in there to finish off that team, right? So that's a well-rounded team, the best picks that money can buy, basically. Um, it's just surprising that they got them. That's what. That's the big surprise, right? Why would another team let these guys go? But, I mean, you already touched on that. So um, I think they're good picks, man. Um, but <laughs> I, I think the Trinidad people would say, well, I see one, two, three, four, five, six Queen's Park players in that team and Andre Russell. <laughs> You know, so there might be some club bias and say, but you know what? These guys are the guys who perform in CPL, so it's good picks. Most definitely. And um, if I just show here, people, unless you've got this on full screen and probably not going to see it, so you might want to expand your screen if you're not. So just to remind people who, uh, the players who were in that TKR side last year, um, who um, Dino was talking about, we're just talking local. We can't talk yeah. about uh, overseas recruits yet because we don't know who's putting their name forward for the draft, okay? But Again, Dino's right. Ravi Rampal was there last year. Um, you would assume if Colin Monroe puts his name in, he's going to come back to TKI. That's his franchise. You'd be shocked if he doesn't. Um, Bravo has actually gone to St. Kitts and Nevis, so we know he's not going to be there. Uh, Pierre, I would expect. Um, Anderson Philip, Dino. Yeah, Do you expect to yeah. see him retained? And Ali Khan, Anderson. if he's available. Yeah. Say again? Yeah, Philip for sure and Ali Khan. I'm sure that's who they're going to look for in the draft. You know, They're going to look to get their guys. Uh, Ali Khan has been there for a while. I don't think he was available last season, was it? But uh, definitely Philip and Ali Khan to fill the shoes of uh, Dwayne Bravo. Big shoes to fit. Mm. And the 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 one thing um, that you kind of touched on beforehand, Tion Webster, Dino. I Now, my understanding of Tion Webster is he's another guy out of Trinidad and Tobago who has been talked up for, for a long time now, um, people, I remember Pollard talking on him, saying, like, this guy's got all the attributes to be another next big thing um, in white ball cricket, um, specifically T20 cricket in the region. But he's never truly kicked on. Now, what I want to know from your perspective, Dino, is that through lack of opportunity or is that something that Tion's got to take responsibility for? Because for me... His career should be a lot further forward at this point, given how early he made his debut, given the pr early promise he showed. Now, obviously, TKR put a lot of faith in him for him to be one of the retentions. Um, wh wh what do you make of Tion Webster? Tion Webster burst onto the scene in Trinidad as a batting all-rounder. Um, he was always an all-rounder. I don't know um, which was his preferred suit, but when he came to the front, he, would make, he was making runs non-stop. Right? He was winning games for the club team in every format and got himself onto the Red Force team and continued to, to show some good form. When he did get opportunities in CPL and in uh, the Super 50, uh, his form dipped when he did get his big shot. You know, so it's form dipped and then he has found himself now like without a red ball contract. We didn't see him in the four day team, right? We actually saw Heinz, which I would think is a like for like replacement in that sense. Or maybe Heinz is more bowling. But anyway, he's not there. And now you think as Queen's Park guys who know this guy, I think they would see him. There's a domestic season in Trinidad now. He's been, you know, so he's around. He would probably, they would see his development to say, well, this is a guy, you know, maybe he just dipped in form. We know he has all the attributes to, to open the batting if needed, as a utility bowler if needed. He could float in different batting positions. So I think that's the appeal to, of the T on Webster for, for TKR. 
Mm, most definitely. And we'll, we'll come back possibly in a touch on T TKR. We must remember as well, in fairness, that TKR didn't get to the final last year. They only made it only. They only made it to the semis. Um, but like, like we say, based on the early list, they start off as favourites once again. Um, it will. Be, the only question mark with TKR is it will be interesting to see who their overseas players are. If they get some gun overseas players, then it's very hard to see how how you stop TKR um, with, with this unit. But moving moving along, Dino, to um, let's go to the to the Kings, Saint Lucia Kings, who made the final last year. Actually, and actually, it was good to see last year's final be between Saint Kitts and Saint Lucia, just to just to change it up a bit. Um, yeah. so the, the, the Kings made the final last year. They have retained, uh, Roston Chase, Keswick Williams, Alzari Joseph and Javor Royal, Royal, if I should say, and they have signed Johnson Charles, who I think was at the Royals last season. Um, and Mark Dayal, where was Dayal last year? Was he at TKR? Oh, he was also at Kings last year, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they've, 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 they've signed Mark Dayal as well. Now. <laughs> on the surface, <laughs> on the surface, that doesn't look strong. On the surface. Yes, mm -hmm. Roston Chase, we know, has had two strong CPL seasons in a row. 2021, 20, 2020 was good. 2021 was very good. Um, Alzari Joseph, we know, is a very good white ball bowler. Jevo Royal, mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm saying jury's out. I'm, I'm, it's a big call to retain him. Uh, Keswick Williams, whilst he might flatter to deceive somewhat at the international stage, he's pretty much a banker in domestic T20 cricket. So I get why they would retain him. But their signings are interesting. So obviously Johnson Charles has played for them before. And then Mark Dayal, let's touch on Dayal. Um, Mark Dayal, there was an article about Mark, uh, Mark. There was an article, I think possibly in the Trinidad and Tobago Newsday or Express or whichever one a while back where Mark Dayal was saying he hasn't received the amount of opportunities in local cricket in Trinidad that he feels he should have got, which has hastened his kind of, um, I guess, yeah. pursuit of T20 cricket uh, specifically. Everybody I speak to who follows T20 cricket and white ball cricket in general always says to me how talented Mark Dayal is. He's, I'm, I'm going to put him again in that same kind of Tion Webster bracket. Why has he not broken out to the extent he should have done, given the skill set that he's got, Dina? Yeah, well, based on if you compare him just to Tion Webster, Tion Webster completely dominated Trinidad cricket domestically. I don't think Mark Dial has ever done that. I have to be fair in what I'm saying. He's never dominated local cricket to say he's one of the best talents in the country. That's just a fact. Uh, Webster has done that. Right. Um, there's local cricket being played right now. There's guys making hundreds. You know, um, I can pull up the list for you. I don't see his name there. Right. Um, so, you know, I have to be fair, but he's, there are so there are guys leaving Trinidad cricket to play in the Houston T20 just now. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if he was there as well. So there are opportunities. It's just not not in within the Trinidad Red Force setup. You know, so he's there with the Kings. He's retained. You know, he's done well. Um, I see him more honestly as an all-rounder. I think his bowling and his batting are equally as as unique. You know what I mean? So they balance each other out. It's not that I wouldn't say he's a stronger batter than a bowler. You know, I think that his his, his talents are good enough for this level of T20 and T10. He's been in the T10 circuit, so that his skill set has gravitated to this way. There's no way I can. There's no way I can say that Mark Dial is a red ball cricketer, right? He's gonna be a white ball guy. I would say to you on Webster, as an example, is can go towards red ball cricket. Just to, mm -hmm. you know, put it in perspective. And I'll say this about Kings match. Where, um, okay, Fletcher's not in that franchise. Fine. Where's Cornwall? And why right. have they signed six instead of seven? Right. And it's Cornwall could have been the seventh if you look at the team from last year. What Kings did last year was bringing Faf and a bunch of batsmen. Right. And of course, the usual uh, Pakistani reinforcements. They had Timo Paul. So Kimo Paul just so you didn't retain Kimo Paul then. All right. 
So, you know, these are the questions. Why six, not seven? And is there no local talent there? So what are you going to do with the extra spot? You know, that's the questions there. And Roston Chase did well with the bat last year. Jeffrey, uh, Royal did very well with the ball, exceeded expectations. So I could understand those picks. Johnson Charles is there because Fletcher isn't. Kestrick Williams, dead bowling, Alzari's Alzari. But, you know, I just think they could have got one more there, whether it be Cornwall, Kimo, or, or was it Obed there? I'm not yes, sure. right. So yes. I'm glad so you said you that. So here's here's yeah, a team here's from, a from last year. So yeah. as Dino correctly points out, Kimo wasn't retained and he's obviously gone off to Guyana. Um, the other local players, Fletcher has gone to St. Kitts, so they didn't retain him. Um, Obed wasn't retained. Now, is that due to injury concerns? We don't know. But the big one for me, as you say, Dino, I was, wait, I was going to say, if you didn't say it, Rakeem's not being retained. Now, as far as T20 openers go, who can strike at an amazing strike rate, isn't Cornwall pretty, in, in terms of the Caribbean context, I like I like Rakeem um, opening in, in CPL because he doesn't waste time. If he's going to score, he's going to score immediately. If he's going to get out, he's going to get out immediately. So I'm surprised they've not retained um, Rakeem. Javel Glenn um, was actually steady last year as well. They've not, re they've not retained him either. Karen Katoy, not retained him. Um, so there's, there are some questions there. I think Dino's right to say, how comes they've gone for six? What was the rationale uh, to not retain another... Um, a, a, another local based player from that that franchise and they they're gonna need an opener that's that's clear by only getting johnson charles they're, they're gonna need another opener again remember we we don't know who the overseas stars are gonna be in this year's uh cpo but they're definitely gonna need an opener um not actually looking at the rest of their team they probably might want another pacer, but again, these might be overseas. These might be overseas picks that they go for. But I think good question there, Dino, to say why haven't they gone for the the fifth uh, retained um, player? Yeah. Although it, maybe that's an error with Mark Dale. But anyways, um, moving on to my side, the Talawas. The Talawas were dread. In fact, no, no, no. I was about to say the Talawas were dreadful last year. Um, they've actually been dreadful for a while now. Um, two years ago, Andre Russell um, dropped a video on Instagram. It might was it two? It might even be last year. He dropped a video on Instagram where he basically said, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing here, that he was sick of the Talawas franchise. He didn't think they were a serious franchise. He didn't think the franchise was run properly. That too much foolishness had gone on. I hasten to add, Dre Russ didn't use these words. I'm paraphrasing basically what he was saying. And he basically said he doesn't want to play for the franchise anymore. When he dropped that video, I expected him to go to TKR for 2021 because he was the, the level yeah. of the level of um, upset in that video. I just couldn't see how he could possibly stay at the Talawas for another season. Obviously, he's gone for TKR this season. Fine, whatever. Chris Gale was supposed to play for the Talawas, um, but. Um, two was it two years back he was supposed to play and then eventually pulled out of CPL. I can't remember if it was two years back. He obviously dropped his this video um, on, I think it was Sarwan at the time. Gail was supposed to go back to the Talawas and has pulled out. I'm just giving some people context for things to yeah. go on going on with the Talawas. And then last year, Rothman Powell said on, um, uh, forgive me, that I forgotten the full name of the podcast, but it's something like the Drive Phase, uh, which is a podcast out um, of the Caribbean. And he said on that podcast that he wanted to see the Talawas have more of a Jamaican identity going forward. I remember that interview very clearly. And he said that he was in discussions with some of the Jamaican players like Fabian to say, why have you not come home to play for Jamaica at any point of, of, of CPL or return to play for Jamaica? And he felt that what was missing with the Talawas was an actual clear Jamaican identity. So when I saw this this retained and signed list drop, I'm not going to lie. Part of me was like, no surprise to see Fabian there. No surprise to see Brandon there. Um, Brandon, I think, needs a change from Guyana. He's had two lean seasons since the breakout season in 2019. He's had a couple of lean seasons with Guyana. So going, going to his home franchise might be the best move for him. Fabian, if he... <laughs> If he wasn't retained, then it's a no-brainer to bring Fabian into the Talawas fold. 
retaining Kinar Lewis. I think that's a no-brainer. I, 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 that doesn't need any explanation. Rovman's captain, so of course he's going to be retained. And then Shamar Brooks. Some might think, why waste a retention on him? But you've got to remember that some of his white ball performances for um, the West Indies in, in, in Pakistan and against Ireland in the 50-over format might be why they've thought, you know what? We'll keep him. And, and I think in the context of how the, the Talawas have... The Talawas over the last few seasons have gone for like a six-hitting approach with their so squad. And you know that kind of mantra of six or bust? Well, they've just been bust. It's no, they, they've, not, they've not actually maximised that approach. So I, I get why you might keep someone like a Brooks around to kind of rotate around to whoever else they're going to get. But the key thing here, Dino, as I end my monologue, is they've only actually retained three players. And before actually you come in, Dino, so what that means is all of the following players weren't retained from uh, last year. Let me just find them. So Dre Russ is obviously gone. Carlos wasn't retained. Chadwick Walton's not being retained. Fidel Edwards not being retained. Jason Mohammed's not being retained. Uh, Versami Permol's not being retained. Um, and then Joshua James and Kurt McKenzie are kind of like your, um, your uh, what do you call it, emerging type players. Um yeah. It looks to me, Dino, that the Talawas are basically having a reset. Yeah, man. Uh, even last year with Powell as captain, they, you know, they're trying to push things in a new direction for whatever is happening behind the scenes. Obviously, it's not the most settled unit behind the scenes with everything that's happening out of all the teams. You know, they've kind of took, taken that mantle from the, the Kings who were a bit unsettled previously. But um, concerns that it's just five. So, you know, all of those five, Braffitt, uh, Chadwick Walton, there's not a keeper there, right? Is Ken R keep? Uh, will, he, will Ken R be the yeah, keeper? All might season? Keep. All yeah. season? So, okay, Chadwick, Jason, uh, Verasami, Pomol in a, in a tournament that's dominated by spinners. I guess they replace him with Allen. But five is a concern. Are they saying that there's no one else from the last season that's worthy? I would think Carlos Braffitt maybe would have been um, a shout to, to keep there. But you know, it keeps the door open. My concern there is there's no fast bowling there. That's the concern, right? Uh, that looks like the top six, top seven. You know, that could easily be the, the, the five or, or, you know, of the top six, seven. But uh, where are the fast bowlers? That's what they're going to look for to complement that unit. I get the idea with Brooks, but in T20, you know, the stats show that the anchor role is actually very overrated in T20, right? And in, as we see, if you're following the IPL right now, uh, Punjab Kings have decided there's no need for an anchor. We're just going to smash everything all, yeah. all the way through the game. So it's, the game's moving in that direction. But, you know, traditionally, if you can get a local guy to do the role, you know, there's guys around like Jason Mohammed Rutherford and other guys who they want to try to do that role as well as smash the ball. You want to get a combination of both, ideally. But I can see the Brooks pick as well. So, yeah, man, reset. Um, I, I wish them the best. But they have a decent five there to, to build from. Yeah, I, I, I would agree that that five's solid. But yeah. <laughs> like you say, there's not... Well, Fabian's an all-rounder, but there's a, there's no there's no bowling um, yet. And yeah, there's there's yeah. some question marks for me there with regards to... They, are they going to oh, just go... Question mash. Yeah. Do you think Fidel would have warranted uh, a spot there? At his age, what do you think? This is why I say to you that I wonder if it's just a reset now. They've got it so wrong. They've, they've been so bad the last two years that this just smacks to me of this is the core and we're now going to build around this core. And they've, I, I think it's now a case of just shedding the fat. But you can't really assess the Talawar's retentions and signings until you see who they... Unlike TKR, where we can go, well, we can see where they're kind of going with this. With Jamaica, you can't tell what's happening next until you see how they build around it, which is why I suspect this is just about this is our base and foundation now, which is why I, what, I see four Jamaicans there. So they're building it around a Jamaican base and then they'll go from there. The question mark I raised when this dropped on the socials was, will we, will we see Chris Gale return to the Talawas now? Um, he's got to go. Chris has got to go somewhere. Now, when you look yeah. at the Talawas, you assume that King and Lewis will open. But remember, Gale's not being used as an opener as much anymore. So I don't, I wonder if they're going to bring Chris back uh, to the Talawas. So everyone should keep an eye out to which side doesn't have a recognized local opener or two and that will be likely where chris gale's going to end up 
or remember you can bat at number three, but that, that's where Chris Gale is likely to end up. Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, the defending champs, and actually the best team last year, yet not just because they won it, they actually were the best all round team last year. I felt they were deserving champs because their team was the most balanced um, last year. So they have retained Dwayne Bravo, inspirational captain um, and leader. And it's worth remembering for St. Kitts last year how much Dominic Drake's improved. And that cannot be a coincidence that undoubtedly that's down to Bravo. Uh, and, and his leadership, how much Shafane Rutherford came to the party. Undoubtedly, that's down to Bravo. In fact, Rutherford has said it in interviews. Bravo said, you're number four. That's your position. That's where you're going to bat. We've got full faith in you. So we cannot underestimate the importance of Bravo as a captain and as, as a leader. He's obviously retained. Evan Lewis is retained. Rutherford's retained. Drake's is retained. Uh, Sheldon Cottrell's retained. That's strong. That's strong retaining all those five. And then to that, They've picked up Darren Bravo, who's obviously not been retained, which makes sense when you consider what TKR have done. Um, and Andre Fletcher, who's not been retained by the Zooks, which immediately tells you that St. Kitts will be opening with Fletcher um, and Lewis, right hand, left hand. Um, I actually see that as a strong list, you know, Dino, uh, as, as a base to go from. Yeah, man, the core of their team is there. Um, who have they lost? Uh, from that team. maybe Devon Thomas might be a big miss for them but Fletcher uh, could kind of uh, pick up that role but um, what is missing from that though I, I agree it's very strong but what is missing are the spinners right mm -hmm. uh, Allen's gone John Ross Jagasa was the, one of their spinners as well and spin dominated the tournament I know it wasn't St. Kitts it was just one venue two pitches but it's been dominated and as a result I'm predicting that in the draft people are going to go heavy on spinners uh, regardless of knowing what the, the pitches are going to offer in, in the venues coming, right? Um, just because that spinners dominate in West Indies traditionally. So that's what's missing in the St. St. Kitts team right now. Um, they, they've managed to keep the core of what have, have was won them the, the championship. And just in a team like that, when you have Dwayne Bravo and Chris Gill in a team like that, you can see why they would come together and play good cricket as a unit. Most definitely. Now, Gail, Gail wasn't one of their retentions. Right. It will be interesting to see, though, and this is coming straight off the back of the Talawars, will St. Kitts just go for him now in the normal draft? Because mm -hmm. just because somebody's not being retained doesn't mean that the team won't just right. go for that player again at yeah. whatever price bracket they're in uh, when the, the appropriate draft comes in. But just to add to what Dino said, the players not retained from last year for St. Kitts, Chris Gale, Fabian's obviously gone back to Jamaica, or has gone to Jamaica, I should say. Uh, Devon Thomas, Riyad Emrit. I wonder if Emrit will get a deal this year, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Colin Archibald, uh, John Russ, uh, Jagasar, Josh De Silva. He would have counted as um, one of those emerging players last year. I would expect jo Josh is going to turn up somewhere. That's a given. Yeah. I don't. Again, it wouldn't. So there's no wicket keeper in. Oh no, Fletcher. Right. Actually, Fletcher, so arguably Josh may not turn up at St. Kitts, but someone, let me just look at the other sides. But each team would need or want a backup wicket keeper, you know, just saying. Yeah. So it, there's always going to be the demand for wicket keepers. Yeah, either way, Josh is going to get yeah. a deal somewhere. That's that. That's yeah. a given. But I agree with you, Dino, in that the, the most obvious thing there is they haven't retained locally in terms of spinners which suggests that maybe that's where they'll go into the overseas market. We tend to have certain players that turn up in this tournament year after year. So I'm talking like um, Sandeep Lamashane. I know he didn't last year, but he's usually in the draft. Uh, Majib is usually in the draft. So I'm thinking some of those overseas spinners who tend to do very well in CPL are likely to be where somebody like a, a team like a St. Kitts and Nevis uh, will be looking going forward. Just on that point, Match, uh, yeah. th there's there's definitely uh, our team, our franchises in CPL look for leg spinners a lot. We've seen uh, the guys from Pakistan, we've seen Lamy Chane come through, and uh, every team would be looking for a quality leg spinner. That's the, as we're on the spinners, I would just mention that. And mm. if you could, like, let's just say Shadab Khan and um, the other uh, Pakistani leg spinner usually play at TKR, if you grab them, you throw another team off, you know. So just wanted to mention that. Uh, traditionally, mm -hmm. leg spinners do well in the Caribbean as well. So uh, another team like the Talawas, who have been dreadful for the last few years, is the Barbados Royals. Um, they were dreadful last year. 
Um, I don't know who was more dreadful, us or the Royals. But they were dreadful. They were dreadful in 2020 as well. So this is a team that won in 2019 and now have been dreadful for the last two years. And uh, for those who are watching this, the one thing that has stood out like a sore thumb for the Barbados Royals is they have picked two for two years in a row. They have picked a side heavy on all rounders. And I, I kept saying, if you go back to uh, the podcast archives that Santoki and I recorded with various people, I kept saying, you can't just pick a team of all rounders. Where is the role definition? You can't have Holder, Reefer, uh, Mayers. Who else am I thinking of off the top of my head? Um, they're all coming one after the other, and no one's an identified gun batsman. No one's an yeah. identified gun bowler. So this is their retention list this year, which is quite interesting to me. Obviously, holders retain franchise player, and I assume he will captain again. Um, although I'm going to be the first person to throw out that maybe the Royals shouldn't let Holder captain. That's no, that's not me throwing shade on Holder, but. Here's, here's my argument. Let me be the first person to say it this year. If Shea Hope is going to be a future West Indies captain, maybe Jason should pass the captaincy on to Shea Hope to get him ready for that. I know it's not Jason's responsibility because it's the franchise's responsibility, but maybe Hope should captain the Royals, assuming he even goes to the Royals. Uh, I should point out because he's not being retained. So Jason Holt is retained. Um, Hayden Walsh is retained. We talked about leg spinners just then. Carl Mayers is retained, which is a that's a no brainer. Um, O'Shane Thomas is retained. Boy, do you know if I could do? I think I should do a podcast episode just on O'Shane Thomas. O'Shane Thomas is retained. Uh, Naeem Young is retained. That's an interesting pick there to to retain Naeem Young. Um, so that's their one, two, three, four, five retentions, and then to that they've taken Devon Thomas from St Kitts. They've taken Obed McCoy from the Kings. If if McCoy is fit, that's a fantastic signing. That's a yeah. like arguably the best bowler in the Caribbean if he's fit. Um, it's hard to know what to say about the Royals, um, Dino. Because I'll tell you. Go, go on, I want to hear. I'll it. tell you. All the other teams, we, the four teams we just spoke of, you, you say, okay, they picked, in my mind, I'm like, they picked these guys and, and they're blocking another team because another team would go for this guy. This is the first team I see O'Shea and Naeem Young. I'm like, you retain these guys. Who's going to pick, who was going to pick up these guys from the yeah. other teams, right? You, um, you look at the list of like maybe Ashley Nurse, Greaves, Bishop, um, Reefer. There's other guys there, you know? You've gone for O'Shea and Thomas and Naeem Young, who I am saying arguably no one would have picked up. Right, um, that's that's my point on this team, and I take the point with the all rounders there. Um, last year they, they said that even it seemed like their the overseas signing was an all rounder, I'm not sure, yeah, right. But like you say, the one specialist there, Ocean, um, I guess that's why they, they you know they're happy with the work that he put in last season and they can work with him, so I guess they, they kept him. But that's what stands out for me. I think no clear defined roles, and it will be interesting. Because I think they're going to go for Reefer, Nurse, Bishop, and Greaves. They're going to go for that four. You know, these, these teams are very predictable in who they're going to go for. And you can really throw them off very easily and mess up their plans. But, yeah, that's why I see uh, um, what happened last year with Barbados. Again, like you said, good team on paper. They never came together as a unit with proper leadership. You know, that's what stands out with that team. I hope they make some better foreign signings, maybe. Well, let, let's look at what yeah. Dino just said there about yeah. predictability, because I'm with you, Dino. So the players they haven't picked up, um, and they actually I've just realised this list that I've put up from last year, this was before all the changes happened. So if anyone's looking at this going, oh, but that person didn't turn up. Yes, right, right, right. because lots of people pulled out. So apologies yeah. if it's not, it's not the most up-to-date list uh, just before the tournament started. But um, where are we? Uh, so Shea Hope. Yeah, hope as well. Yeah. So that's has not been fine. picked up. Yeah. Um, Reefer, Greaves, Nurse, Bishop. Yeah, as you pointed out, right? Now, I would be shocked, Dino, if Barbados doesn't just pick up Shea Hope again. Um, don't get me wrong, maybe Hope would benefit from going to another franchise. But this is my one big criticism of CPL. Um, and possibly the Caribbean. Again, this is a podcast episode in itself. But possibly the Caribbean and franchise cricket in general. We're so parochial that we, like, as much as their franchises, <laughs> everyone still picks their people. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, yeah, that's a they are, very good point. Yeah. He's Trinidad, Barbados is team as a lot yeah. of ba- like it doesn't. Yeah. It don't. I get it, but it also doesn't make any sense in terms yeah, of yeah. we don't actually do the franchise thing properly. Where, yeah. um, where we actually try and spread people out a bit. People still want to keep their their yeah. core, their their island men in their, in their actual team. Yeah, yeah. And then you could do a breakdown of all the franchises in the world and say from Mumbai, how many guys are from Mumbai? Or from uh, the Lahore franchise, how many guys are from Lahore? If you want to go in that direction, I'm just saying. Yeah, but, true, actually. Good. That's, yeah. A, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, I'm just saying, if it was cities and not islands... I wonder if it would be different. So if it was Kingston right. Talawas instead of Jamaica, people wouldn't necessarily identify as much with I'm going to go play for Jamaica. I don't know, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's another com- a conversation. Yeah, it's a whole new... Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the last team, the the, peren- the perennial Cinderella's, um, still yet to win, despite always tending to have one of the best teams in the tournament. And off the back of what I just said, they have gone Guyana heavy with their retentions and signings. Uh, but actually, off the basis of who they've got, so Hetmeyer, no brainer. And actually, now Puran's gone. I wonder if Hetmeyer's now going to get the captaincy. Um, I wonder if this is Hetmeyer's time to to now captain his franchise. So um, Hetmeyer retained makes uh, no brainer. Old Dean Smith, fantastic retention, particularly because of his upward trajectory in the last year. Um, that that is a no brainer ret- retention. Uh, Romario Shepard is a no brainer retention hemraj actually is a no-brainer retention as well um and then they've signed two players kimo paul wasn't retained by the kings so he comes back home um and remember that a lot of the tournament i think is it how many there's a lot of games in guyana this year guyana will have the finals as well um lots of the knockout games lots of the group stage games so they're on home territory so kimo paul um has re- come back a multi has signed. I'm trying to remember where Multi was last year. Was he not? No, surely Multi is a retention. One second, um, uh, Dina. I just want to double check. Surely Multi was on that squad last year. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. error. It's not a sign. Multi was retained. Yeah. Um, so that's four retentions, or is it five? Yeah. One second, one, two, three, four, five yeah. retentions, and bringing in Kimo Paul um, from the Kings. The players not retained. Puram, who's obviously gone to um, uh, to TKR. Uh, where are we? King has not been retained, gone to Jamaica. Niall Smith has not been retained. Bramble Sinclair, not been retained. Sinclair and Ned have not yeah. been retained. However, I can see a lot of those players just getting picked up straight away. And again, because the tournament's in Guyana, I can see Guyana going for a very Guyana heavy side familiar with the conditions and also Dino don't be surprised if they pick up the same international players that they always get so I expect to see Imran Tahir come back I don't know if they'll go with Shoaib Malik and Mohamed Hafiz again but I suspect Guyana are going to go with a team that has played with them before and is very familiar with Guyanese conditions any thoughts on that oh yeah definitely surprised there not to see Sinclair picked up I mean he's an outstanding off spinner in the Caribbean uh, I think another team will will grab him and they had another spot um available right this is six yeah so they had they could have got one more player um out of their squad so they didn't pick up Bramble they need a wicket keeper who's it going to be so they are looking for a wicket keeper now um I like the name Quinton de Kock I'm just saying that that's a guy who could come and lead the team and wicket keep for you and he's He's saying that he's done with South Africa. So there you go, guys. You're welcome. Uh, get Q- QDK down here. Um, but I, I like it. I like the, the, the squad. It's very powerful there on paper. You know, um, good to see Kimo Paul back. You know, that, that I'm looking forward to that, to see uh, how he, he turns out. But Odin Smith, Hetmeyer, Shepard, match winners. Um, Moti a bit surprising, but um, spinners are going to be key. They got, they got a good all-around mix, but they still need some experience there you know this will they go will malik be that guy this season 
Uh, what we've seen with all the teams is their familiarity, familiarity, right? They've picked mm. the guys that they from their islands that they've gone for. Like we've said, we've identified TKR will go for Colin Monroe. You know, it's pretty predictable at this point who they're going to go for. So that's why I think it's an opportunity now. I know we're talking about Guyana, but if Guyana want to compete now, they've got to pull the guys from the other teams, mm, right? Mm. And, and that's what the other teams have to do now. They've got to start mixing up their plans and throwing off the other guys' plans now. Um, you look at the pool of guys available locally, you know, there's some big names there that haven't been picked up. Let's just say like a Carlos Braffitt and some other type of guys that have not been picked up. But again, Marsh, at the end of it all, right, my thing is how can you let Andre Russell, Brandon King, um, Devon Thomas, Nicholas Puran, how can you let these guys out of your franchise? You know, that's the big question for me. I know we started with that, but are you let, what, is it letting these guys go? Um, it, it just seems like a, a franchise would not let Russell go if they're in control of it. That's just what it seems like. But I think here the, all the teams have the basis of a, of a good team. They have the foundations of what they need. You factor in four overseas guys and some movement around, I think they're going to, you know, as long as they bolster their team, they have the foundations there. I think even Guyana, like we're on Guyana just to end, they can still be there in the final. Based yeah, on that. I, I think I just want to pick up what you just said there. Yeah. If I give these franchises the benefit of the doubt, so let me look at Guyana, for example. Let's assume, I don't know, and the thing is, mm -hmm. Dino and I don't know this, so right. we can only make the assumption based on the information that's in the public domain, right? Okay. We do not know which of the players in each squad is in the top two salary brackets, right? If we knew that, it might help us understand why certain teams haven't retained certain people, right? So if I look at Guyana, for example, I have to assume that Shimron Hetmeyer is in one of the top two slots, I also have to assume, but I don't know, that maybe Odin Smith is. I don't know. Because of his trajectory, I don't know. But uh, Or even Shepard. Or it could be Kimo Paul because Kimo Paul was in slot one last year because he was picked up as the, um, as the what do you call it, like the designated player for, for the Kings last year. So what I need to understand is, using Guyana as an example, does that mean that Guyana said it is better, let's assume it's Kimo Paul, that he's in slot one or two with Shimron Hetmeyer. Are we to assume that they said we would rather lose Puran and take mm -hmm. Kimo Paul as our slot one or two? Do you, do you understand where I'm coming from, Dino? But without that information in the public domain, it doesn't make a lot of sense. To why. Yeah. It, wow. it, so even if I don't use Puran, yeah, yeah, yeah. look, look yeah. at Brandon King. So in that team, in that Warriors team, they have no openers. So as much as I'm saying King's had two lean years, did the Warriors deliberately say we don't need king this year we're going to leave ourselves with no local opener <laughs> we're going to yeah. let maker pick him up and the competitions in guyana where when he had his breakout season it was in guyana <laughs> playing all of his games at providence jesus sometimes do you know am i right do you know when i just say sometimes the strategizing doesn't look like it makes a whole lot of sense you know, that's that's the question. You know, we're just asking the questions. You know, um, the list of the salary caps is what you need to, to find out. You know, the public list of salary caps. I know it's changed. That's the thing. It's been changed with people coming in and out. So there's the final confirmed list is not really public knowledge. Right. Otherwise, we would have been able to break this down and say, well, logically, he wasn't available or he wasn't available. You know, but on paper, you look at every single guy with an S on his name and you wonder why would a franchise let this person go? Just ask that question for each person with an S next to his name, right? Why would you let this person leave your franchise? Some you would say, okay. Some you would say, absolutely not. So that's the question specifically that we're asking, right? Teams got to pick five local guys from their team, and then they got to pick two local guys from any team. And this is what happened, right? There's no way... If I had a franchise that I would let my guys go, if that's the structure of the franchise, if that's I'm bound by the rules of of the tournament, that's that's a bit clear, clear about that. <laughs> and let me and just to make sure that we're being balanced about this, let's yeah. let's use an example where it's difficult 
because it's easy for us to say, why would you let Puran go? Or why would you let Brandon King go? But let's look at an example of a team that actually has let someone go, but it might have been a difficult decision. So St. Kitts and Nevis, um, Dino, they've retained Dwayne, sorry, DJ, Evan, which makes sense, Sherfane, Sheldon, Dominic, but they didn't retain Fabian. Now, arguably, based on balancing a side, I kind of get why that decision might, uh, not saying I agree with it, but I get the difficulty of not knowing who to retain and having to therefore lose someone. So in the St. Kitts and Nevis sense, I can see the rationale behind how you might not retain Fabian Allen because you've actually got a really good championship win inside. Right. Young, you've got the young blood in Drakes. You've got Sheldon Cottrell as your new ball bowler. Sherfane Rutherford in your engine room. Evan Lewis mm -hmm. is one of the best openers in the world. DJ Bravo needs no explanation. So it makes sense. Why you yeah, might not yeah. retain a Chris Gale, why you might yeah. not retain a Fabian Allen. But for Guyana, it makes less sense why you right. would not retain Nicholas Perrin. So we're just yeah. being balanced yeah. here to show how it can yeah. make sense and yeah. how it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, that St. Kitts team is so strong, Devon Thomas couldn't get in that team. Chris mm. Gale was not retained in that team. So that's kind of making the point for Russell and Puran as well. If Gale's not in the team, you would think Gale is this marquee guy that you would absolutely have to have in a CPL team. Um, it's not the case, so it begs the question, was that Gale's choice? I'll, I'll ask the question, did he say, don't put me in the draft? You know, did that happen? You know, he's an iconic player. He's a legend of the game. He's, he probably has a voice to say, look, guys, just throw me in the draft this year. I don't know. Again, that's assumptions on my part because of how big of a player Chris Gale is. And then it makes me wonder, did Obed McCoy do that? You know, if Chris Gale can do that, did Obed McCoy do that? And again, I just speculated, you know, just mm. speculated. Because again, the St. Kitts is a perfect example because it's so strong and they've let go major players. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people, this isn't the be all and the end all of CPL uh, analysis. We, we <laughs> I would, I said to Dino before we press record, no one else is going to do this. Because we're right in the middle of IPL. Um, so no eyes are really going to be on CPL. But this is big news. For our region, this is our T20 tournament. And in the absence of anybody else willing to do any deep analysis on it, you know what Caribbean Cricket Podcast like, we're going to be the ones to do it. We're going to be the ones to get out in front of everyone else and say, well, here's our initial analysis um, of what's going down. And <laughs> listen, I know for a fact that people watch this stuff and use it as the basis for getting some of their own research started as well. And that's not us boasting. That's just facts as far as I'm concerned. So, um, you know what, Dino, as ever, thank you for coming on, providing your analysis, providing some of your thoughts. Um, you know, you people know how it goes already. Press the like button, press the subscribe button, follow Dino at Crick Dino. You can see it on, in fact, let me take, let me take the C-pill off the slide. Follow Dino um, off the uh, screen, sorry. At Crick Dino. Uh, Dino's got a lot of things uh, going on in um, uh, behind the scenes in terms of his own uh, things within the cricket world. So get following him, get talking to him, messaging him, so on and so forth. Dino's big on the whole fantasy uh, cricket leagues as well. So if that's your thing, Dino's the guy to go and talk to um, about that. And obviously, uh, CPL notwithstanding, there is obviously the IPL going on and so on and so forth. Dino, I'll leave you for the last words. Oh, man, you know, looking forward to CPL. Always a pleasure to be here for all the fans of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. You know, um, it's good to see that you guys are keep supporting and helping it grow. I remain a fan, after, like I said, from day one. But with the CPL, I would like to see some more uh, tactical picks with CPL. I want to see some more uh, emphasis placed on the draft and getting picks, not necessarily from your same country, but picks out who are going to win you a title. That's what I would like to see in the CPL. So for the owners and the players and those in control, let's try to get a team that can beat. You have to now counter that. We, we see here to speak CPL, someone has to counter that TKR side. Mm. And you can do that in the draft. All right, that's all I'm saying. Make some wise picks. And let's get the ball going in that direction. Every single league and other league has done it already. All right. So um, always a pleasure, Match. That's it for me. Um, just great to be here as always. Well, people, Dino said it perfectly. If you are a member of the Amazon Warriors, Royals, Kings, Talawas, or uh, Patriots backroom staff, 
start thinking about who TKR might want and take them. <laughs> that's yes. the way. That's the way. Let's to go. Start preparing yeah. for this tournament. We've been the yeah. Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Thank you for listening. As ever, get in the comments below. Dino will be there. I will be there responding to everything. Thank you and good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans.